What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, testing negative for the viruses, and having a great day so far. Welcome to the Sunday edition of the Virus Update for Sunday, July 20th, 2025. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. You clicked onto the YouTube channel that talks about all the different viruses that can make us sick. The latest data, levels, wastewater. It's Sunday. We're going to take a look at wastewater sites today. And yes, news as well. Well, if you're new, subscribe down below, give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and if something triggers a thought, leave a comment down below, or even if it's just a check-in, maybe you can uh, just check in from wherever you are at this time, leave that down below. I love when people check in and tell me to various different places from really all around the world. It is fantastic. Alrighty, we have just a few news stories today. We'll take a look at some EMS calls. Uh, we'll take a look at a few other things, uh, emergency department visits, uh, diagnosed with COVID here in the United States, and yes, we will take a look at some wastewater data. I think this is going to be a shorter video, but let's see what happens. Oh, I should tell you this, we're also going to take a look at the symptoms of COVID. Now's a good time since COVID is rising in the United States. You know, I like to keep up with that. Uh, I like to do it at least once or twice a month. And I haven't been doing that. We did it recently. It's time to do it again. All right. Seventh whooping cough case confirmed in Haywood County. This is in North Carolina. Remember, they have been having a whooping cough problem there. It's been a whooping cough problem all around the country. It's been whooping cough problems in other countries. Uh, Japan is the worst country. But, hey, we're having it here, too, in the United States. And Haywood County, North Carolina, whooping cough cases at this time are increasing. And this is the seventh case, and it also marks the first time an adult has contracted the infection in the county. All other reported cases are among children and teens under the age of 19. All right, moving on to this. Italy. Uh, this is not a good thing whatsoever. A new all-time record for COVID reinfections in Italy, meaning the number of people who are getting COVID more than once, or a second time now, we should say. Uh, yeah, that's hitting a new all-time high. So, yeah, COVID in Italy. More and more people are being infected a second time, or maybe even more than that. All right, moving on now to Dennis the COVID Info Guy, Queensland. Contact tracing underway after a man diagnosed with rare MPOX strain in Queensland Hospital. At least 19 community members and 40 staff at the hospital have been exposed to the man. This is not good. Uh, the person recently returned to Australia from Africa. Yikes. And this is the uh, clade one MPOX. It's saying here the patient was diagnosed with a rare strain of clade one MPOX after he was presented to the Logan Hospital. So uh, yikes, MPOX. Hey, I told you, we call this the virus update for a reason because we talk about a lot of different viruses. And I'm sure someone's going to ask, well, I don't talk about flu. You know, I get that a lot. We have been talking about the flu in Australia. And to be fair, I get it. It's summertime here in the United States. It's winter time there. You know what? We'll even take a look at the flu in wastewater here in the United States. And you'll see that in the United States, flu is not bad right now. It's COVID that's starting to be on the rise once again here in the United States. All right, taking a look at this. Speaking of COVID, here's the latest variant picture with a global scope to late June. The NB.1.8.1 Nimbus and the XFG Stratus variants are battling for dominance in an unclear picture. XFG Stratus looks to have the best growth rate, meaning XFG is likely going to be the one that takes over. Yeah, XFG is going to probably be the next variant to take over. Here are the trends across all international traveler samplers from that perspective. XFG Stratus is dominant at 48%. So, yeah, XFG, it's, it's up and coming, and it's here. Now, what I can tell you is this. I do not see any indications or any word on what could be coming down the line after XFG. I know about XFG.3. Not hearing if that's going to be what comes next afterwards, but uh, right now we're at XFG. I do like to keep my eyes open and my ears open as well. I like to be attentive to what may be coming down the line, and I'm just not seeing that as of yet. And remember the NB.1.8.1 variant? Well, that looks to be 
taken over by XFG on the global scale. Uh, if it hasn't happened yet, it's it's coming any moment now, and it looks like it may be happening as we speak. All right. COVID is starting to get worse again in the United States. Now, we're not as bad as we were last summer at this time, but nonetheless, with rising cases, people may uh, start to feel ill. And someone might say, oh, these summer allergies or, oh, summer cold's getting to me. Well, stop right there. You know, there's a lot of different symptoms of COVID. Not everyone who gets COVID just automatically gets the fever, the chills, all the big symptoms. No, you could have minor symptoms. And that could still show up positive on a COVID test. I've mentioned this before. I'm going to mention it again. Viral load. And you're probably asking, a viral load? What the heck is that, Mr. Data Report? Okay, viral load is the amount of exposure. I guess this is the best way to say it. The amount of exposure to the virus. So, in other words, say you are masked, right? And uh, you're in contact with someone who had COVID. Well, because you have a mask on, especially if it's an N95, and I do have an N95, for example, hang on, I'm going to get it for you, N95 right here. Say you're wearing an N95 mask like this. I'm going to give you a great example here. Put the mask on. Okay, this is still tight. Now, if someone comes near you, you know, you're in the grocery store or whatever, you're rummaging through the cabbages, you're taking a look at the tomatoes. Oh, that's a nice tomato. And someone next to you goes, <coughs> I'm like, uh-oh. Well, because you have a mask on, you're not getting as much of that air particles. It's preventing some of it from getting to you. You can still get infected. And I'll be honest with you, I had COVID back in the winter time and uh, back around the holidays. And my own silly fault, I had a mask on, but I was in a grocery store. Proud of grocery, you know, Christmas Eve, uh, grocery stores packed. I'll never be doing that again. But, you know, even with the mask on, yeah, in that case, um, it's unavoidable. But it at least lessens it. Now, if you don't have a mask on and you're right there, you're immediately exposed to someone. You get a full whiff of the coat. Yes, you're going to have more symptoms. So get what I'm saying here. The more exposure you have to someone who's positive or, God forbid, multiple people who are positive, the higher viral load you are going to have. And if you have a higher viral load, oh well, heck, you're going to be dealing with uh, much more symptoms. So here's the latest symptoms. Fever or chills, cough, Shortness of breath, difficulty uh, breathing, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, new loss of taste or smell, fatigue, muscle, body aches, headaches, nauseous or vomiting, diarrhea. And, you know, these are just some of the symptoms that the CDC lists. There's many different symptoms. And, well, if you go on for long COVID, which means you're not getting better and it just keeps going, lingering and lingering or worsening symptoms pop up, well, heck, you could have 100, 150 maybe even 200 different possible symptoms you could uh, deal with. Now, if COVID starts to get serious for you, there's a time you may need to speak, seek emergency help. Uh, if you notice it's getting so hard to breathe or you're having trouble breathing, maybe you have a blood pulse oximeter and the O2 levels going, we'll say below 90, uh, and it's time to call emergency services or have someone get you to the emergency room. Uh, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion, inability to stay awake. Yeah, there's a lot of different uh, things that could happen. Like if, if you feel like over dehydrated, you want to be drinking a lot of water. When you have COVID, you want to make sure you drink a lot of water. And you know what? When it's hot in the summertime, you want to drink a lot of water. Let's pause and take a hydration break right now, shall we? Already doesn't that feel much better, but you get the point here. There's a lot of symptoms of COVID, uh, some that resemble the flu. Many of these can be the flu, but with COVID, it can be worse. And some of these also resemble allergies, congestion or runny nose, sore throat. Yeah, that can happen with allergies. Uh, loss of smell. Well, if your nose is clogged with allergies, it can happen with that too. You get the point. A lot of things are similar. Uh, when I had COVID, the lingering thing for me is cough and, of course, a headache and fatigue. Yeah, I still get them from time to time. And the coughing business and shortness of breath for me, that originated from infection one back in 2020. All right, let's take a look what the EMS calls were in Philadelphia yesterday. 736 EMS calls. Uh, take a look at Montgomery County on a Sunday, if we can. This may be slow to load. 
uh, we can see right now that there are currently 11 total calls. We're not seeing breathing difficulty. When we see a lot of breathing difficulty calls, uh, sometimes it can mean that COVID is getting pretty bad. We've seen that happen in the past. Taking a look at what is going on in Chester County, Pennsylvania right now. And we see that there are a few calls at the moment in Chester County. I'm seeing a stroke show up a couple times. I'm also seeing respiratory difficulty in West Chester. So you get the idea there. There are some calls at the moment. All right, let's take a look at what's going on with wastewater in New York State. Now, mind you, there's a lot of uh, wastewater sites here that did not update. There's only nine participating counties. Things are moderate over on Long Island. And in Western New York, we are starting to see some of these sites are coming up low to near moderate, but it's not terribly concerning just yet. I would like to know what all these gray sites show, but obviously it's grayed out, so we can't see that data at this time. Let's take a look at what's going on with emergency department visits diagnosed with COVID. Then we'll do a few wastewater sites and call it a Sunday. First off, the United States as a whole is on the rise once again. Alabama, yeah. Your emergency department business diagnosed with COVID are rising. Alaska is dropping. Arizona is dropping. Arkansas is starting to rise. Take a look at California. Not only is California rising, they're starting to pick up the pace. Colorado rising slightly. Connecticut was rising slightly. Now you've dropped a little bit again. Delaware is dropping slightly. Washington, D.C., District of Columbia has dropped slightly. Florida, you're just rapidly approaching 2% now. That's really bad. Not as bad as last summer, but nonetheless, that is getting pretty bad. My thinking is that at some point in August, that is going to turn around and drop, but we'll see. Uh, Georgia at this time is rising slightly. Guam has dropped a little bit. Hawaii is, let's see, you know what? You're at 2% in Hawaii. Yikes, Hawaii is rapidly exploding now. Uh, Idaho, little slight rise at the very end there. Illinois, not too bad. Indiana, you're okay. Iowa's starting to rise. Kansas is okay. Kentucky had a slight rise, then you dropped a little bit. Louisiana, starting to rise more. That's going to continue based on wastewater. Maine has dropped slightly. Glad to see the state that I'm in has dropped a little bit. Uh, Maryland's starting to rise a little bit more. Massachusetts is okay. Michigan is okay. Mississippi, going up. Slight drop at the end, but overall, you've been going up. Montana, slight drop now. Uh, Nebraska is okay still. Nevada, you went up ever so slightly. New Hampshire has dropped slightly, but uh, there's a wastewater site that's concerning in New Hampshire. I think we need to look at that. New Jersey is flat at this time. New Mexico has flattened out a little bit after a rise. New York starting to rise ever so slightly. North Carolina's rising a little bit. North Dakota is okay. Ohio, you may be getting ready to rise soon. Uh, Oregon is flat at this time. Pennsylvania is okay. Rhode Island has dropped slightly. South Carolina. Looks like at the very end there, there's a slight rise. South Dakota dropped slightly. Tennessee, ever so slight rise. Texas is continuing to rise. That may even be starting to pick up the pace. Utah, maybe a slight rise. Vermont is still okay. Virginia is starting to rise. You can see that's just like all suddenly there goes Virginia. Uh, Washington, the state of Washington, still okay. West Virginia is okay. Uh, Wisconsin's okay. And well, we don't have anything for Wyoming, Missouri, and or anywhere else yeah there's a few places that just do not update all right taking a look at wastewater first off i'm just going to randomly do a few states uh, alabama at this time is rather low you can see here that they drop slightly after having a brief rise and then let's go down here to uh california or out to california i should say on the list it is we're going downward and california is now in the high category and continuing to rise and i think that's just going to continue summertime that's what they do you can see here look around the bay area a lot of high sites there uh let's go down to florida and one would think florida's looking pretty bad based on what we saw with the emergency department visits and florida has now entered the high category for covid at this time that's not a good thing let's go somewhere up here in the north let's take a look at what's going on in massachusetts Massachusetts is not doing bad at this time. Matter of fact, Massachusetts is still listed at very low. Taking a look at what's going on in the state of Oklahoma. I don't know how many, yeah, just one wastewater site. One wastewater site for the whole state. Meanwhile, you have Oklahoma City. Come on, get your stuff together. Uh, let's do some more wastewater sites. Uh, that one wastewater site is low. Let's go check Arizona, shall we? We don't do enough stuff for Arizona. There's a few states. We just don't get enough stuff. We don't get much information on 
some of these states. Low in Arizona still, and that looks to be flat at this time. Let's go out to the state of Washington in the Pacific Northwest, and we'll also take a look at Oregon, too. Uh, still low in Washington at this time. Let's take a look at what is going on in Oregon, shall we? And in Oregon at this time, we do see, you no, know, that's Oklahoma. We want Oregon. There we go, Oregon. And in Oregon, we should see things, start, yeah, moderate now. Yeah, once again, things are starting to rise in Oregon. So you get the idea here. And I also promised we would take a look at influenza. So we can take a look at influenza A, and we'll see what the trend for that is in wastewater. And we can see here, the trend is flat at this time. But look back at the winter. We had a big rise for influenza A. Yeah, that is problematic. All right, let's take a look at wastewater scan, if we can. Uh, we're moving very slow here. I apologize for this. Uh, taking a look at what's going on. Yeah, here we go. Dover, New Hampshire. I won't see this. Look at that. From June 22nd on, Dover, New Hampshire, now rapidly rising. Now, we've seen this wastewater site go erratical before, but yeah, that's a pretty rapid rise. That is a concerning rise there in Dover, New Hampshire. Let's take a look at a couple other places. And mainly, you know what? Let's just take a look at the map since uh, this is just loading so slowly for us. Alrighty, here's the nationwide level, and I'm going to show you the regions here. We can see the south is listed at moderate. The northeast, for whatever reason, is listed at high. I don't know if that's actually accurate. I think that's going to correct on Monday. The midwest is listed at high, and the west coast is listed at high. Can we try for another wastewater site? Let's go to Colorado. I don't, I don't know. If this doesn't load for us, we're just going to uh, finish with today's. Okay, now we're starting to load now. I actually paused making this video, and switched over to a different web browser. I'm a little far away from the router at the moment. And it's also very hot here, so the humidity is starting to get to my laptop. And we're about to have some really nasty thunderstorms. I'm already starting to hear the thunder. All right, take a look at this. You can see, where are we at here? South Parker, Colorado. Wow, a big rise here. Now, this could be a little overdone, but even if it gets corrected, South Parker, Colorado, you are really starting to rise for COVID at this time. That is uh, very concerning. If you live in that area, you definitely want to be taking precautions. Obviously, you know, Florida is really bad at this time. Now let's go down and take a look at how many high sites we have there. Uh, there's been several of them. Yeah, take a look at this. Uh, more than half of the sites in Florida are in the arms, which means high levels of COVID. And if we take a look at the South as a whole, let's see what we see here. Yeah. I mean, the South should just be listed high at this point. Look at this. The South is starting to rapidly rise for COVID at this time. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's virus update. If you enjoyed today's update, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. If a thought came to you, leave that comment down below. Uh, my website, datareport.info, not going to be a post with the news stories for today. I will see everyone again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe, everyone. Have a fantastic Sunday afternoon, and thanks for watching.